what we are witnessing really is uh, the result of decades of uh, of a campaign run by Russian intelligence, really, um, so that it's really easy for them to detect the vulnerabilities and conduct um, measures of demoralization. So, um, yes, what we're witnessing right now is a campaign of demoralization, like we've seen them before. Uh, we've seen them uh, um, also um, instrumentalizing the peace movement uh, for that purpose, but also um, we have seen campaigns um, smearing uh, politicians who are supporting the deliveries of, of, of uh, weapons at the same time, uh, by the way. Um, so it's a classic toolbox of demoralization, and it's no surprise to people who deal with such questions. We can definitely say that some German uh, politicians um, owe their careers to um, measures of infiltration. Um, this is the case of uh, several members of the current Bundestag on the side of the AfD. Uh, we also see some very worrying ties among uh, Die Linke, formerly known Die Linke, now um, people who have defected to uh, Sarah Wagenknecht's um, new political party, uh, people who have uh, visited the Donbass region, met with uh, uh, Russian intelligence there. Um, this is This is really worrying, yes. So yes, we can definitely see, say that. There has been a very interesting um, investigation conducted by the insider, um, um, by uh, Spiegel as well. Um, those were joint efforts. Um, and they have actually uncovered the classic textbook case of, of an infiltration uh, with a member of the uh, current uh, Bundestag, who had an aide who, who himself could classify not as an asset, but actually as an agent. Um, so yes, there is a difference. An asset um, is somebody who is uh, strategically placed in a certain context, um, who is a helpful for the agenda of an hostile entity that can be activated uh, for that purpose, some are assets wittingly and or unwittingly. Um, uh, we have also the category of, uh, of fellow travelers, people who are happily volunteer to conduct such operations. And then we have agents. Agents are actually people working for intelligence agencies. Um, and that's their job. They are trained. They are trained to steal um, information. Uh, they are trained to uh, conduct uh, measures of um, intimidation, destabilization, you name it. Uh, and in the case of, of Russia, they are even trained to conduct wet, wet jobs, as we have witnessed in, in Germany. So um, it's very far from, um, from what we, uh, we could suspect if we just watch James Bond movies. There is a there is a part of the agent work that is uh, really an office job, uh, analytic job. There are certain uh, vulnerabilities that are known that have been detected because they've been studied. We know, for instance, from former defectors such as Ladislav Pittman, who used to serve uh, uh, in the uh, Czech, uh, in the, the Czechoslovak um, intelligence services and defected uh, later, that um, most of the first uh, part of, he, of, of his job was really um, observation and detection and um, uh, conceive or, or the, the conceptualization of um, of, a, of psychograms. Uh, and when they had extracted a, a certain profile from the data that they had been um, gathering, uh, they actually knew which button to push. Uh, and um, the target person was then 
uh, used as such um, means that, um, of course, they know which button to pu to push. Uh, that's actually what makes uh, the interesting part of their job. It's the very detection of those vulnerabilities. These um, the sides of, of, of weaknesses can, uh, can be cultivated along the line of aspiration or frustration. Uh, this is a work of, that takes many years and um, it, it's, uh, it, it's a very tricky part of the trade of espionage. Um, and a handler um, has a very important role in that, uh, in that context. It's the person that is going to bring the target person to either carry out a mission or deliver an information by using these weaknesses and using these vulnerabilities. Now, there is what we call the German angst. Um, so the German angst, um, to give you an example, uh, played a role in um, in one of the, the operations of, the, uh, of Russian intelligence, uh, the famous uh, case of the nuclear winter. Now, how do we know about the nuclear winter, disinformation related to the nuclear winter? Because we had a defector called Sergei Tretyakov, who defected, he was a, a, an SVR uh, officer, and he defected uh, to the United States, and as every defector, he had um, enough. Um, he had assembled enough files, which he was able, which he was able to hand um, hand over to the uh, to the FBI, and was debriefed as well by the CIA. And um, we learned that the nuclear winter campaign that reached Germany in the 80s was actually uh, the, the product of, uh, of, a, of a campaign of Russian intelligence um, in which um, Mr. Tretyakov had uh, participated um, to scare off um, the Germans about an imminent um, atomic uh, war and the consequences for uh, well, for humanity. Uh, and the button is still working, by the way. We see it now. Uh, Putin is um, aptly um, using this uh, type of um, technique to scare uh, the Germans. Uh, so basically, the answer is very easy. Every human being um, has... Um, vulnerabilities and fears. Some because uh, they come from trauma, others uh, other because of education. And when the other side has a psychogram and they are aware of the traumas and they are aware of the weaknesses, it is where they will push in terms of disinformation, of course, to um, destabilize or to subvert, or to scare. That's the way Russian intelligence works. And German angst is one particular sign uh, of our, if I may say so, German character. And the, uh, the other side knows how to use it. So yes, we are scared of a of nuclear, uh, of the nuclear threats. And this is why Vladimir Putin is repeatedly using this type of rhetorics because we as a target group are very vulnerable when it comes to these types of, uh, of threats. He doesn't try these other, this type of threats, let's say with, uh, with the British target group or British politicians. Well, first of all, uh, Great Britain uh, is a nuclear power. And second of all, um, the, the British political class is very well aware of those techniques and they react accordingly. Same thing in France, where Macron has, in my sense, um, 
replied um, in, a, in a very uh, capable way to the threats from Moscow in that, that he uh, kept a strategic ambiguity as to what France could do or could not do. Uh, it's exactly the way to deal with such threats. And then we have uh, Olaf Scholz, who obviously didn't get the memo. 